Hi everyone, my name is JC Lashka and thanks for taking time to join me on another quick session of insight and revelation on how to recover all that the enemies have stolen from you. We all need to understand by now that the wars we are fighting are not against flesh and blood. We are fighting against principalities and powers. We are fighting against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against the spiritual wickedness in high places, according to Ephesians 6, 12. In other words, you will never overcome a spiritual problem by dealing with it physically, which you should all know by now. Spiritual matters should and must be addressed and dealt with spiritually. If you fail to understand how these powers work, and if you fail to attain the right knowledge on how to overcome them, they will defeat you and even cause you to go down the road of destruction. For that's what the lack of knowledge does, according to Hosea 4, 6. Now, for those who have not watched my previous videos concerning this topic, I suggest you do so, so that you can have a follow-up of what we're talking about today. It is always important to understand what your problem is and where it's coming from, for you to be able to overcome it effectively. Before you engage on the path of recovering what the enemy has stolen from you, here is the main question that you should be asking yourself. A question that will give you direction on how to deal with it. Is whatever you're experiencing right now a pattern affecting the whole of your family? Or are you the only person going through it? That's how you know whether you're dealing with a foundational problem or one from outside your bloodline. One thing you should know is that every challenge you're having right now, relationships, finances, health issues, etc., they're all operating under an altar which was fully programmed to dictate everything that is happening to you now and in the future if you do nothing about it. They have literally sealed your fate without your knowledge. The spiritual realm fully controls and rules the physical. So whatever they spoke over you, will by all means become your way of life until you change it. This generation of curses from your family tree are always from your parents or grandparents. They are the ones who raised these altars, probably for protection, prosperity, and so on. And that's how they ended up taking full authority over that household. They intentionally brought and invited these powers to work for them. And that's why it's so difficult to deal with them. For they have made vows and covenants with them, making the members of that household their legal captives. The problem always comes in when they fail to meet their obligations and agreed in the beginning while making the deals with them. Once they breach their contracts, they will be provoked to put everybody in that family in what we call a collective bondage as a way to remind them of their terms and conditions which they have failed to honor. These spirits do not have better ways to communicate with people than the way of causing pain and suffering to those concerned to get their attention. They are very systematic in their way of operation. Control and instructions come from the family strongman, commonly known as a spirit husband. He is like the main spirit who gives out orders to the rest to make sure that the punishment decided for that family remains in place and active for as long as it takes. He cages all the destinies of the members of that family and takes away all their possessions, causing the whole family to suffer the same fate. They might even cause untimely deaths or chronic sicknesses to the members of that family if they see it fit. And if nothing is done, the flow of these events continues throughout the generations. Another way that your stuff could have been stolen is through your friends, social media, your colleagues at work, and any other close associates you might have out there. You have seen people who innocently display their blessings and happy moments on social media without understanding the dangers they're exposing themselves to, just because they see other people doing it. Then they wonder why everything goes wrong right after. If you know you're not spiritually fit, please do not try to do what you see other people doing out there. 
you do not know the power that these people are using to protect themselves. Some are highly protected. And so no matter what they do, nothing can harm them. Make a decision today that you're not going to sit there and allow some people to continue prospering day after day using your stuff. As you sit there crying and questioning God on why he's letting all these things go wrong in your life. When he has clearly told you to go and seek knowledge or you will perish. Mark 3, 27. For indeed no one can enter a strong man's house to steal his possessions unless he first ties him up. Then he can plunder his house. If you must recover whatever they have stolen from you, you must be ready to, do, to deal with these powers effectively through prayers and fasting. There's no other way around this mountain as a Christian. Start your operation by binding the strong man, as the scriptures have instructed, and by inviting Christ himself to wage war on your behalf. For you can never fight a stronger man than yourself and expect to win. You must also destroy the altars that are sponsoring him and his team, commonly known as the household wickedness. That is the place of transaction where everything was programmed. Withdraw and break the contracts, the vows and the covenants made with them, or you will remain under their power and influence for the rest of your life. Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. As long as you know the power you possess as a Christian, and the understanding of knowing that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, no evil in hell can harm you. Learn to speak the word of God in all your situations, for it is the most powerful weapon you have as a Christian. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you on how to pray effectively, for he is the one who understands the nature of all things. I'm going to stop here for today, and I'm looking forward to hearing the testimonies, for we do not worship a God that fails. Whatever he promises, he honors by bringing it to pass. Your persistence will determine the amount of time you're going to spend in that wilderness. And so you must arise and pray effectively without ceasing for you to have victory over your enemies. My contacts are in the description box for those who would like to get in touch with me. I pray that God restores everything that has been stolen from you sevenfold. According to Joel 2.25, victory and power has already been given to us through the finished work of Christ on the cross. And the only thing remaining right now is for you to stand up and exercise your God-given power over your enemies. Psalms 27, 8. Some take pride in chariots and others in horses. But we take pride in the name of our God. For they have bowed down and fallen. But we rise and stand firm. See you next time. And God bless you.